Hey there! Happy Wednesday! Thanks for joining me uh, for Craft Night with Friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So, all right, we are working on the embroidery of the month, which is the garden. We're this far on it. Uh, this is what it'll look like when it's done. Uh, so we are going to just continue on that today. I think we'll get the bench and the, not the awning. What is it called again? Not the terrace, not the, the, well, the thing that goes over. <laughs> I forget what it's called again. The little archway. Um, we'll get that done, or at least uh, as far as we can today. That is the plan. So, all right, let's get going. Okay. Hey Alicia. All right, so let's get situated right here. All right. Okay, so here's where we left off yesterday. We got our little trees done and we also got um, this like back fence done. Uh, we're kind of going from what's the furthest back to the um, furthest front for this project. Uh, so next we are going to focus on, I think, this little quadrant here. So let me flip, flip our instructions around. Uh, so here we are. Um, I think I want to start with this bench. I think maybe the bench and then maybe the back of this, um, I can't remember what it's called again. We said it last night. Oh, oh, my mom says pergola. <laughs> Mom's over on Facebook. So yeah, so someone said, someone called it something else though last night and in, in my head it feels more like that. It starts with a T. A trellis, a trellis. That's what I'm trying to think of. <laughs> the trellis, or it could be like a pergola too. I like the trellis. I think that sounds pretty. So, uh, but yeah, so I think I'm gonna do the back of it. Like this front piece, the back, uh, we could get this back line and then back this. The only thing I'm not going to do is like this front little bit because we do have some of the vine. Oh, wait, I do want to go in front of there. Well, I guess this little bit is the only part. Um, I might actually just stitch the whole uh, trellis anyway and then you know there's a tiny little part here that goes underneath that trellis line but that's really the only thing that goes underneath the trellis I think maybe I will just go underneath my stitches to achieve that I'm, I'm not quite sure yet so uh, we'll start with like this all this other stuff first and then maybe we'll just I don't know tweak him in there later I don't know We'll figure that out. Let's start with the brown. We'll do the, the bench first. So I got my brown here. Oh, we must have a piece started already for this. Okay, we got a little piece and then we got our big piece. Let's use that. Uh, this is what we're doing. The, the folding method, the loop method of starting our floss. So I'm gonna pull out one strand. There we are. And I'm going to fold that in half so we have the two ends together. And then I'm going to thread those two ends. I'm going to actually move my needle minder too because it's kind of in the area that we're stitching and I kind of like it far away from where we're stitching. Okay. So one side we have our threaded ends and then down here we have the fold and we're going to need that for threading. But let's get, let's move the needle minder. Let's plop them down at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm going to stitch this bench with a back stitch and uh, some of this fence or some of this bench is in front of or behind uh, this tomato plant that's here, I am going to just go right behind it without getting out of the way for those, those um, leaves and stuff. We'll, we'll stitch that on top of these lines when we're, when we're that far. So, all right, I'm going to start with this base here and we're gonna just go all the way straight up. 
So to start our stitch, we're doing uh, going in and out right away. And then when we flip to the back, pull through till here's where that fold is. We're going to stick the needle in there and pull tight. And there's our loop method of starting. So nice. Love that. Okay. Mr. Bench here. I kind of want to do, well, a little late now. I was like, I could do like one long stitch for each of these sticks, but we didn't really do that in, or parts of the bench, I should say, but we didn't really do that at these other parts. So we'll, we'll keep it at just back stitches. Um, let's see, where to go next? Let's, let's do the frame first. We'll go all the way around the outside. Then come back in and do all the um, slats or whatever. Can you put that up to the camera? Oh, sure. Here we are. So I am uh, uh, going down like a, a little letter H here. I know there's a lot of stuff in front of it that's a little confusing. Um, that is all going to be... Uh, that's all going all around here is going to be the tomato plant. So if we look at this, we can see that tomato plant kind of making this line and a whole bunch of little shapes there. Uh, so that's going to cover up our stitches here. So I am kind of using, using the instructions here as a guide to uh, Arlene asked if I worked on the, uh, the baby project today. I did the baby shower gift. I did, and man, you guys, that took a lot longer <laughs> than I was expecting, but I should have known better. Uh, anyway, I did do that. I don't have it um, nearby. I'll, I'll show it uh, tomorrow, tomorrow evening. But I did make a, a tote bag. It's much smaller than I was thinking based on the quilt, but man, once you add the boxed corners and some seams and, and all that, it, it um, definitely get smaller, but I think it's just actually probably a better size now. Um, but yep, got that done. I ordered a couple more books that came, like little children's books that were on their registry and uh, some toys that we made and, and all that. So it's all going to go in there. Plus that little blankie that I crocheted. I'll, I'll show, I'll like get it all out tomorrow and have like a, a show and tell. That'd be fun. But yeah, and I have a little bit left of the quilt that I made it out of so I think we can do another little zipper pouch or something out of that which will be fun so I think here to I think I'm gonna go all the way up through here even though like on the instructions I probably don't really have to I could just kind of stop because this big leaf goes in front of this back corner. But I think, you know, I could just do two vertical stitches. We'll just do that and it'll get covered up by these other things. It'll be a little bit confusing um, when we stitch that area. I think this is probably the hardest area of, of the piece. It's the most dense area for sure. But yeah, so we'll have to, I can see See my little lazy daisies there, but there's a lot going on. So uh, um, we'll keep looking at the instructions as a guide when we get that far. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Arlene. Yeah, it's uh, it took like a lot of the day, and I was trying to film film it and stuff too. So I'm gonna I'll edit together a little bit so you guys can see the process. But I used up almost all of that binding strip that I made. So that worked out nicely. I, I have a little bit yet, like maybe a couple feet, but not a lot. Not a lot at all. Should we get, let's, let's get, let's get all the, um, let's do all of the slats first and then I'll do the back, the back of the, um, that, back of the seat line, I suppose. This line right here, we'll do that last. We'll get all of these little guys in. I think I'll cut right down to this side. Alright, and then we'll go 
go back up the other way. It's cute. It's definitely detailed, this, this little area, though. So once you get through this area, I think you're home free. This is where it just feels nice to just relax and stitch. It's kind of fun. Just chilling for the evening. You guys, it is weird outside right now. It was like green. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's crazy outside. And, and John says that it's supposed to storm, he, he read. But it was kind of creepy looking out this evening. I think it's a little, I think it's, um, past sunset now but like right before like our dusk was a weird color i guess is what i'm what i'm saying so we'll see we'll see if we get a big storm tonight Ooh, i might run out of floss here hopefully i have uh, just enough thread to finish this guy I think I'll have just enough for this bench. It looks so funny. It looks almost like a little chevron here without that back line. And like if we hold it this way, it's just like a bunch of chevrons. It's kind of funny. Ooh, it's stor Kelly said it stormed in Michigan earlier. We usually get it the other way. Like usually whatever we get in Minnesota here, uh, my parents are in Wisconsin. So we usually get everything like <laughs> eight hours or so ahead or at least five hours ahead um ahead of them so i'm thinking we're probably getting something different than than michigan but you know sometimes sometimes they go in the opposite direction which is weird i'll have to check i haven't checked the weather or anything um today but i'll have to check because it was definitely creepy. All right, I'm doing that bottom line, and I think that will um, will be out of thread then. But we won't need any more. We will be done with the brown. All right, last stitch on there. Little guy floating on his own there. I think that's pretty cute. All right, I'm going to weave in the end to the backs of all these stitches. If I could stitch really itty bitty, I would put little kitty cat sitting on this bench. That'd be cute. That's what, that's where Chad would be, I think, if this was a real place. Okay, Chad kitty. All right, so I think I do want to put some of those um, uh, trellis bits in. So let's see, I kind of mushed, I'm using this as a tray, but I kind of squished it all together. This is like my, my long bits and then the, the extra little bits. And I think we have some long ones there yet. Yep, all right, good. That's all I needed. Let's get another piece out of here Zoop. all right and yeah so the part that I don't want to get is right there I don't think so if I can go this way get these side bits and this back piece here and then maybe to there. Uh, you know what? I think I can probably get underneath those stitches if I if I needed to, but maybe I'll stop right there. And we can do kind of what Jenna was saying, like maybe stick the thread off to the side. I'm actually not sure this thread will go that far anyway. Oh, Chris, I'm happy to have you here. Thanks for hopping on. All right. Um, there we go. Got my folded end over here. Uh, let's get started. So I think 
Why don't we start here? Oh, that's this is a good plan. So I'll start here, go up this way, get this little bit, and then maybe I'll come down? Because then I'm close to here, and I can just start going this way, and I will have missed this gap, or I'll have missed this little space here, but I can come back to that later, maybe. Or maybe that's a dumb idea, but I don't know. I'm, I'm going for it. Let's do that. We'll see how it turns out. All right, I'm going to start here with my back stitches. Ugh, all messy already. And let's flip to the back, go through our fold. And there we go, we got our perfect little loop method. Loop method to start. All right. The only part where this trellis goes in front of the plant is right there. So that's kind of the part that I'm thinking of leaving blank for now. So it'll look kind of bizarre until we get the trellis, or until we get the um, vine on there. But I think, I think this is going to work out. Oh, got a loopy knot here. So here's one of those uh, nefarious embroidery uh, knots here. Um, I am going to just put my, it's one of those loopy knots. I'm going to put my needle in that loop. And I'm going to pull on one of these side threads. And the one that pulls it up to the needle is the one that, that we want to want to do. The other one will make it tighter. So try one out if it feels like it's just getting tighter and not moving, then stop and then switch to the other one. The loop will pull the knot right up to the needle there. And then when it's, it's right up there, I can take the needle out and then just like pull and it'll, it'll come out. It's basically just a slip knot, you know, if the thread just looped up on itself a little bit. But they're annoying to get out unless you do it that, that one way, I feel like. I think for the vine, maybe we'll do all the lazy daisies or the single chain stitches. Um, maybe we'll do all the single chain stitches first. All right, so now I'm, now I'm doing that weird thing where I'm going to go down here. <laughs> uh, and then we'll come back and do the lines, the like actual like line going down the middle. I think maybe that's my plan for that. And then maybe I'll get, um, put the, get, or do the rest of, the rest of this little trellis bit, the part that I'm going to leave out, and uh, then do the French knots after that. And, you know, honestly, that's probably, like, all we're going to um, be getting done on this today. This is, like, our dentist, densest little area on this piece where we <laughs> spent a lot of time on it and it and it doesn't um, doesn't last very long. Oh, I could use that uh, the gar like a garden smelling floss conditioner. Yeah, I think we're probably fine. All right, now I'm going to jump up here and I'm going to just like cross over. I'm going to go a little further back and cross over this last stitch, which is going to make it or the stitch going down here, which is going to make this line that I do now feel like it's in front of this. Uh, and then I'll pick up like maybe two more stitches here after I stitch the vine. But now I can stitch all the rest of the trellis because um, the vines go in front of all of all of these. It's just going to look super weird right there for a bit. Oh, Paula says it would really love a kitty for this garden. I know, we should have put a tiny kitty in here somewhere. Ooh, 
Ooh, I'll get to see my parents' garden this weekend. I think, um, sounds like all the squash are getting crazy, which is fun. It'll be neat to see that. Oh, nice. Uh, Blue Moon says, sorry, I'm a bit late. Was caught caught up in watching pottery. The Are you watching the, um, I want to say the Great British Bake Off, but that's not what it is. Oh, the Great Pottery Throwdown or the, or the Pottery Throwdown, whatever they call it. Um, let me know. I love that show. I've watched all the seasons that they have on Netflix, right? Yeah. Is it Netflix or HBO? I've seen it, uh, or let's pretend it's Netflix. I've I watched all of them, unless there's a new season out, because then I gotta get watching them. That's a good one. I like that show. Oh, on TikTok. Ooh. Oh, so were you watching a live, a li someone's live pottery on TikTok? I would totally watch that. Um, yeah, there's a, I think it's on Netflix. Let, someone let me know if I'm wrong, but, uh, there's a, it's called, I think it's called the Great Pottery Throwdown. If you do a search on Netflix for Pottery Throwdown, um, I'm sure it'll come up. If it's Netflix, it's either Netflix or HBO, because that's what we got. <laughs> um, and, it, and that also assumes that they haven't taken it down, but I don't know why they would have done that. But yeah, it's like, I don't know if you've watched like the great, uh, great British uh, baking show. It's kind of that vibe. And I think it, it's, it's a British show yet, but they're at this like really cool old pottery factory that's still in use. And, and um, then they go through it all uh, like, you know, like, uh, projects each week and someone gets kicked off each week and stuff too. But it's one of those shows where everyone is just so sweet and nice to each other that it just, it still feels good. Oh, Cerulean Crystal says it's HBO, I think. Oh, okay. So I guess it's on HBO, not Netflix. Um, oh, Corey Sandler was live. Okay. I'm going to have to look, look them up. I'm going to write that down. I like me a good live, <laughs> especially a crafty live. Where's my pencil? Sandler. I don't follow them, so I'll have to look them up. I've definitely been watching a lot of lives yet. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's my mom. She says, HBO, five seasons. <laughs> uh, so five, five seasons. It definitely warmed up after a season or two, like the first seasons as from what I remember, they feel like they were a really long time ago and they're kind of like working the format a little bit. Um, not a really long time ago, but it just felt oldish. But then they, they found their stride and the stuff that they made are still was still cool and everything. And oh, makes you want to do all the pottery shenanigans. Oh, her vibe is awesome. Uh, Corey Sandler, I will definitely um, look them up right after we're done here. All that stuff is amazing, all that clay stuff. All right, I'm definitely gonna run out of floss before I, I need it. So you know what? I think I might just stop with this color wherever I get done. Although I do need to get this little bit right there. I think I'll have enough for that. But then I'll do all the vine stuff and then I'll come back and do this little back piece and our little bit after the vine is done. I don't think anything, oh, it crosses over a little bit right there, but I think we can get away with just tucking under, like going underneath a leaf or two. So we'll get this little bit. I'll just go till this thread is done. So we might get over, we might get pretty far over there. But what I was hoping for happened where we end up close to there. Although now I'm seeing, oh, I know this is, this is, um, I'm like, oh man, did I miss a part here? But this is the fence and that's in front of all the vines. So, uh, that's good that we, uh, didn't stitch that part. It's kind of fun crossing over all these, the stitches that are further back. And I hope there's another 
pottery um, throwdown again soon sometime. I like that show. Nice and chill. <laughs> nice, easy show. I'm actually watching a car show now that gives me those same vibes. And oh my god, I don't even remember what it's called. It's on, it's on Netflix and there's a new season out. It's not like car masters. It's like from trash to treasure or something. I don't, God, I don't even know. But it's like a small little crew doing really artsy cars. And maybe someone else here <laughs> knows it. But it's got that same like art chill vibe to it. I don't know. It's It's different though. It's not like a game show like the pottery and the um bake-off but it's still just kind of calming to watch i like it i don't know anything about cars but i like that show all right i got far enough to get to where that leaf is gonna go over so this is great so now i won't have to like get underneath a leaf oh god we have like two more stitches here Normally I would maybe split this to three stitches, but maybe with two stitches I can... Oh my god, I literally don't know if I can get that far. Let's let's see, I have no thread left. Can I get one more stitch? Because that would be cool. We'll go forward. No, it's not top tier. Oh god, I don't even remember any of their names. There's... Yeah, I think there's... um. What are those names? There's only like five people on it. I think Mark... So if anyone watches the show and <laughs> these names are familiar, then then uh, then uh, spit it out. But there's like the head owner. And it, they just own like a couple little garages. His name is Mark. And then there's like the salesman guy. Uh, what was his name? Sean. And then... Candace does the engines, and then there's Caveman, <laughs> the guy named Caveman on it, and then I, one other guy that does, like, um, like, the electronic, or, like, the water cutting of, like, steel and, you know, more engineery type guy. I forget his name, though. Anyway, that show, if anyone, if that sounds familiar to anyone, it's just, like, an easy car show. And the neat thing about it is they... They get a super junky car at the beginning of the season. And the whole idea is like, let's keep, let's make, oh, it is Car Masters? He has two cars in, oh, yes, yes, that's him, user, uh, user 52. Yes, car, okay, so it is Car Masters. Okay, so yeah, Car Masters. I like that show. It's it's better than I think some of the other car shows. I don't know why I'm watching all these car shows, but, um, but it feels like like this small group of people like making art, and I just love that. But the premise of the show is, um, I think this is this is the yeah, this is the dark green. Um, the premise is that they, or like the gimmick of the show, I suppose, is they start with like a super junky car, and uh, you know they work on it, and then they instead of selling it, sometimes they'll sell it, but like the theory is we keep trading up. So let's start with like, you know, a, a $2,000 piece of junk and then end up with like a car that we can sell for like $250,000, something like that. So like they keep trading up and it's just like the, like, how do they find buyers for these and like things fall through and, you know, so it, it's all of that like selling of it and uh, I don't know, all of that that side of it along with making like these really like artsy cars i don't know i think it's and then the group that they have just those five people is just like such a good vibe all of them i don't know i like it oh blue moon says my husband and i watched that yeah i don't know there's something about it that you just feel like good and you're rooting for them and i don't know it's just you feel just nice watching it and <laughs> there's not tons of shows like that i don't feel like so I like it. I don't want like a whole story and drama and, you know, s plot, you know, I just like these <laughs> just easy, easy shows. So yeah, I I'm 
John's already watched this last season. Um, but I'm watching it now, the, the latest season. At least the latest season that's on Netflix. I don't know if it starts on Netflix. I don't know where it begins. All right, let's... So I think let's let's go on this side. I think I can see a little bit better on this side. We'll do him. Um, I'm gonna do the lazy daisies or the single chain stitches. We'll do those first. So it's gonna look super weird. I'm gonna have just like all these little loops, and then maybe we'll jump over to here. I suspect I'll probably be out of thread by then, but I don't know. We'll see. All right. So I'm gonna start by like looping, since uh the chain stitches are. They don't work well with the um, uh, the loop method doesn't work well with the types of stitches that you have to go back in the same hole for the first stitch. So I'm gonna instead of doing the loop method like how I was for this back stitch, I'm gonna just loop around stitches that already exist on the back here, just like that. And now we're we're good to go. So it's just as easy and fun. All right, I'm gonna crawl up. The other way I could do this is do a chain stitch and a chain stitch and then a stitch up the vine and then the next chain stitch and the next chain stitch and another stitch up the vine. Maybe that would be an easier way to do it. I think we'll do it that way. Then I'll just run out of thread when I run out and I won't have to like backtrack. So we are gonna just make a bunch of tiny little chain stitches and if they go over the trellis, that's totally fine because everything uh, can go in front, except for that little bit that we left. That will go behind later. Oh no, Aline says, I used to sell cars for many years. Such a great job, it was fun. Oh, that's, that's good to know. I think uh, on that show, Sean is the sales guy. Um, dude, I think he's got, <sighs> That's the hardest part of that whole thing, I think. Like, he's just trying to match. First of all, he has to know everything about all this car stuff, just like the other people. I mean, he is a car guy. He's been doing it forever, but found out he was, like, good at, you know. He's just, like, one of those, like, people people. So he's good at these connections and, um, you know, putting these deals together. Has his, you know, Rolex of people that he can call on that are interested in buying cars. It's just, that just seems like though, the matching things up and finding cars and all that, that to me, that's that's the, the tough part of the job. But maybe to someone else, like it's not, but like, man, that just seems like magic, everything that he does. Uh, I mean, everything everyone else does too, the actual making of the vehicles and the creative behind that is just so cool too. But, but like, man, that finding all the people and matching them all up just seems. And, um, uh, the just like finding the junkers and stuff, the cars too. He's finding people and he's finding cars for these trades. Oh yes, Blue Moon. There's um Blown Away on Netflix too, which is glass blowing. We just watched the the last season of that, so we just finished that. <laughs> John and me, we love all those shows. Uh, but yeah, that one too is another one. That's an um, oh no, that's that's I think it's Canadian. So it's still kind of got like this gentle vibe, but that's a little bit more competitive than, than, uh, um, I don't know. It's about the same vibe as, um, the pottery throwdown as far as like people being nice. Most American game shows I feel like are just so stressful and they cut so fast and they're just, you know, it's all about like, you know, screwing over the person next to you and whatever. And I just hate that. So all these other like reality shows where they're actually making something um, that's important <laughs> to in the shows that I like. Um, but with like these easy vibes where everyone just wants everyone else to do really well, I, like that's, I, I like those ones. So that's, that's um, Bake Off for sure. Uh, Pottery Throwdown for sure. And uh, same with, same with this, glass blowing one although I feel like they're maybe a little bit more competitive there and it's a little bit more edited like oh who's gonna get it sort of thing but they're still it's still like a small community I feel like of glass blowers so they're they're all still you know 
nice to each other. <laughs> but I do like that show too. It's crazy. That so Blown Away is, is what I'm talking about. It's on Netflix and it's it's glass blowing. And we started watching it right after um, like I think the first season came out, like right after my dad and John did like a glass blowing, like a intensive workshop for a weekend. And so we knew like what the vocab for what all the different ovens were called and and uh, like the reasoning behind them all. And he they got to like actually experience it. So it was just just made it extra fun to watch. But yeah, it's impressive for sure. I mean, you got to just re- like you watch it and it's like, oh, my God, that's like molten lava that they're <laughs> that they're like maneuvering which is ridiculous and you can't even they can't even like know the colors really because when it's all lit up and molten you know everything's bright orange (laughs) so uh it's just so cool to see how they end up end up when they're done Ooh, caitlin got caught up with the luna moth today nice uh the luna moth embroidery Add it to the collection. Oh, you posted it to Facebook. Awesome! But yeah, the Luna Moth was last month's Embroidery of the Month. Alright, so I think this is a good way of doing it. I, I'm Just to recap, I'm doing the stitches, um, the chain stitches, and then I'm doing, like, then moving up along the vine Uh, and what that does is it allows me to put the vine kind of in front of the chain stitches so the vine part the middle line um is like on top of the stitches which i think makes it look clean and and nice oh can i do a quick walkthrough of the chain stitch uh kelly absolutely so all right um so this is sometimes called a single chain stitch uh, the way we're doing it here, where they kind of meet in the middle, it can, can be considered a lazy daisy stitch. So if you see either of those terms, they're kind of interchangeable. Here we have single chain stitches. Um, if you put a bunch of them together, then it's like a true lazy daisy. Like if you if you put a bunch together where all the centers kind of meet or are close near each other, so it looks like a flower, it's a lazy daisy. So we're kind of doing that here where two meet in the middle. So I've done the one and I've come up uh, just at the same point where they meet. I'll try and get a little bit closer here. But uh, you can kind of see, I mean, it's, it's hard to see, but there's like a teardrop shape here. I am coming out at the point of that teardrop. I'm coming out and I'm going back in right away. But I've made this kind of arc that's going to be in the same shape as my my teardrop. So I'm not doing it down here because my teardrop is, is up here going in this direction. So I'm just um, kind of having my fabric go in that arc. I'm going to go down a little bit. I'm running out of thread here a little bit. So, um, but then I'm going to come up right away at the top of the arc. So at the like apex of that arc, that makes sense. And I'm going to bring the needle up within that loop that I'm making. And my thread is going to catch that loop. And I'm going to leave it loose. I'm going to leave it lazy. You don't have to like pull as tight as you can. Uh, Just let it be relaxed and lazy. And that's what it's going to give that teardrop shape to it. And then we have to, we have to attach that down. So I'm going to put a teeny tiny stitch right on the other side of that uh, chain stitch. And there we go. Now he is stuck on, uh, on the fabric there. Uh, so I'll do this next batch up here, and then we'll do back stitches for them. So I got two of them here, a teardrop over here and a teardrop over here. I'm going to come up like where they, they meet. And uh, I'm going to make that loopy shape, and I'm going to go down in the exact same hole. It's a little harder when you have less thread like this, but then we're going to come up at the apex. And I'm going to hold this first thread so it doesn't like pull back through to the back. Let's just pull slowly. And there we go. I got my lazy um, chain stitch. I didn't pull it very tight. Uh, but we need to 
tack that loop down because otherwise it'll just pop up, pop up like that. So we need to tack it down and add a little stitch right on the other side of the loop. And there we go. And now to do the other side, I'm going to come up in that same hole there. I kind of find it helpful just to like let it be on a surface because then I can hold, hold it down with my thumb here. We got that loop. Go back in, come up at the top of our arc within our circle. And there we are. And tack it down. There we go. So that is the chain stitch, the single chain stitch. So you can actually do these in rows. Um, we don't have any of those in this design. Um, but like chain stitches are super versatile. You'll see them in, in lots of different uh, stitches. So like I said, like the lazy daisy stitch. Um, you could do them all in a row for a chain stitch. All sorts of little things. I just love them. I think they look, it reminds me of knitting and crochet, which always makes me happy. <laughs> they use a lot of thread though. Like I'm going to run out of this really soon here. The other way to make them, which is sometimes helpful when I have less thread, let's see if I can do that, is through the sewing method. So I'm going to come up in that same hole but I'm going to go, I'm not going to worry about the loop this time. I'm going to go down in the same hole and then up at the top in the same motion. So in and out at the same time. And now I'm going to wrap that thread around the front of my needle. That's me making the loop basically. And then I'm going to pull through. There we go. And there's our loop. And I just have to tack it down. So that's kind of a nice way of doing it. I might do that for the rest of them here. Let's see, does this one, oh yeah, this crawls. We got a couple that kind of crawl over the edge here. I think this one I went a little high with. We're gonna crowd some more in here. Go in and out. That in and out motion is a little difficult because you're coming out like sideways, which is tricky. Um, so sometimes having the fabric a little looser in the hoop is helpful. All right, let's get the one coming up on this side. This is where it's just crawling over the trellis here. Ooh, can't grab onto the thread. There we go. down. Get some of our back stitches in here. I don't know. Can we get one more? This one is kind of like a solo one. This guy's all on his lonesome, so let's see if we can get this one. Like, he doesn't have a pair. I'm going to have you go over the end, or over the edge of the trellis, I think. That'll be cute. Exaggerate that overlappiness. Boop. All right. Tacked it down. So <laughs> that's what we got out of one whole strand. Um is is just this far <laughs> I think like, I think I can put one more back stitch in here and uh, I will have to weave in this end but yeah so I think I'll just continue we'll get the um, the rest of this one done and then the other one is here I'm wondering if I should start I suppose I can just go the opposite direction. So I could just kind of jump down here if I have thread left and get this little bit and then kind of work my way down back that way. Um, we only have about 14 minutes left here. Let's, I, I don't know if we'll get that far. We'll have to see. 
But this is pretty good. Like, like I said, this is a totally dense area of this piece. So I'm not surprised that this is um, all the farther we are, this little area. So we will be working on this next week as well, uh, till we get it done. This is uh, one of our more detailed pieces for sure. So that's, that's why it's gonna take a hair longer. Uh, but cute, that is looking really sweet. It's so dense and lovely though, I love it. Oh, I know, I missed a spot on the on the trellis. I, I missed, I didn't do this spot right here yet because um, because the vine actually goes behind that piece. And I also ran out of thread. So I ran out of thread at the perfect time, um, but I on purpose left that open because I'm gonna put this, this green um, vine there and then I will go over the top of the vine with um, like two or three more stitches there. So you can see here that little part goes in front. So I'm like, eh, maybe I'll just stitch that part later and stitch all these other bits first. So we're giving that a go. But yeah, it's so like dense, I, I like it. All right, let's find another piece of green. We got two of these left before I gotta pull a whole new strand. Zoop. Okay. So I'm just gonna loop it around some some the backs of some stitches that are already there. Like right here, maybe. There we go. And let's continue with these guys here. And I think I'll keep on with that sewing. Well, I don't know, that's a little tough right there. I'm gonna keep rotating my um, piece so it's just comfortable in my hands. I do like my left hand to be able to reach the stitches. Like here I can hold down the piece of thread so it doesn't um, pull back into, into the back. So I like doing that. So that means I may be upside down for a little while, but that's totally fine. Whatever makes it easiest to get your stitches going. over that guy again. Let's do let's do another pair and then I'll do some more back stitches. I like how they hang off the trellis a little bit. The sewing me method seems, uh, le Kelly's saying the sewing method seems less enjoyable than the other way. It depends. Um, one way that makes the sewing method easier, and I'll, I'll do that in a sec here, um, is having your fabric looser in the hoop. So you just have to be aware not to pull things too tight, your thread too tightly, because you don't want it to like pucker. Um, but if your fabric is more loose in the hoop, like, I don't know if you can see, I can move it around quite a bit now. Uh, then it becomes easier to come for that upright motion. So like if I do that now, I go down and up, I can kind of help it, help it along a little bit. And there we go. So that, that definitely helps a ton having it looser in the hoop. It's just not my, oh, let's get some back stitches. It's not my normal, like the way I, I learn basically. It's not like my muscle memory version of, uh, of stitching, so I don't do it. I always kind of do the stabbing method is what, what we, the other way of doing it, like where I go all the way down, pull through and then come all the way up. That's called the stabbing method of embroidery versus the sewing method. 
where, again, where I go in and out in one motion. Um, oops, forgot to go through. I have found, for me, I get more accuracy with the stabbing method, but the sewing method, once you get going on it, it can get speedy. Like, you can get going pretty quickly, which is nice. Oops, shoot. Ah. Okay, we're we're safe. I thought I, I thought I got myself all tied up in a knot, and now I, I missed I missed this again. What the heck. Around back. There we go. Sheesh. All right. Tack it down. Add a back stitch for the vine. I think we just have like three more to go here. I think. Arlene says, I call the stabbing method my preferred method. I, I think so, too. Me, uh, I like that better, too. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna, it just requires me to be upside down a hair. I'll tighten everything back up in this hoop, too. There. Forgot to go around. Boop. We'll cross over the trellis again there. It's kind of fun. And I think this last one, this single one, crosses over. Use like the new growth on the end. Alright. And let's get two back stitches, I think finish off that vine. So that vine still needs a bunch of cute little French knots that will will fill it out with the light green color. There's actually a whole pile of them, so it's gonna get even more dense in back there, but I like it. It kind of brings your eye through the piece a little bit, I think, having like a nice dense area in back. Ooh, Emma says I cross-stitch sometimes. I love the cross-stitch. I definitely want to get back into that again soon here too. I know I've been saying that for a little while, but I really do want to. Uh, it's it's, boil, it's starting to boil up to the top. It's going to overflow soon and then we'll be doing it. All right. So we got that vine. We got some thread left. Um, maybe we'll go just till this thread is gone tonight because we only really have a few more minutes. So this is that tricky area. This is probably the trickiest part of the piece. It's right here. So we're going to cross over our um, bench a little bit, and uh, it's just a whole jumbled area right there. So I am going to keep an eye on this just to make sure I'm getting things in the right spot. And it looks like we got our first little guy here. And then we get some of the pears crossing over it too. And then we will get, so here, like right now, I'm definitely, I can see the lines just barely behind, oops, <laughs> go back in the same spot. I can see the lines barely behind the, the bench now. Um, so I'm, I'm just making sure that where I'm stitching looks similar to that. I think we're good. Then get the little one on the other side here. And we are going to be out of thread real soon here. So this is like a, I'm going to do a little back stitch now to connect these. Uh, this is like a little overgrowth. It's, this must be end of summer. <laughs> The vines are getting a little long here. They're encroaching on the entryway. This is definitely an end of summer garden. Everything's all nice on the vine, ready to be picked. Trees are ready to be picked. That that's, gets closer to fall for sure. Ooh. 
Oof, running out of thread here. I'm gonna have to go in my loop. There we go. Cute, this is looking so sweet. I know, look how tiny the cardinal is. Yeah, it's it's like itty bitty bitty. <laughs> and then we got another one here. It's so small. So that's that's why this we gave this one a, a two, a level two uh, rating versus our just our normal beginner level ones. It's totally doable for our beginner and everything, yet there's just a lot of stitches. It's just more dense, uh, more closely stitched together than, than uh, a lot of our other pieces, so totally doable yet but yep lots of little dudes in here all right that's looking pretty cute let's get on the back stitches And thanks again, everyone, for your follows and shares tonight. You guys are the best, as usual. I love hanging out with you all. Um, and yeah, well, if you're watching live and you order something uh, $20 or more from the shop, uh, I will throw in a free mystery gift. And I'll let that go. I'll let that ride for, you know, another 10, 15 minutes after we're done here, too. So we're going to be wrapping this up in, like, the next three minutes or so which is about the exact amount of time I will have uh, with this thread. I think I think this has got to be my last stitch. I think I actually overextended myself with this last stitch. Let's see if we can do it. I think the sewing method is going to be the way to do it. Eh, there we go. Let's get the little thread around there. And good. We didn't pull it off the, off the needle. That's good. And we'll have just enough to weave into the back. Uh, all right, and then we'll just see where we're at for tomorrow. But I'm thinking we for sure finish this trellis tomorrow, and then maybe the little rocks below the trellis. Uh oh, shoot, I thought that happened. Pulled out the thread. Actually, you know what? I think I'll just leave it going. I went back and forth twice. We'll just call it a day there. I'm going to put other stitches there that'll hold things in, so I think we're fine. All right. Oh, it's so pretty with the the vine going over the top of the bench there. I just love how that looks. So fun. All right. So uh, tomorrow, first thing, we will finish this vine. Not much more to do with that. I mean, about it's about this much, so it'll take us some time yet. I mean, those lazy daisies where it's a pretty dense area still, so it'll it'll um, take some time. Uh, but then we can get all the little French knots. There's piles of little French knots tucked in here. And then let's just finish this back area. Um, let's do these um, rocks. Oh, and then we got the, we have to get our little um, tiny bit of. Um, trellis yet that we that we don't have and I must have a little scrap somewhere because that's just like three stitches but we could in theory come over here and do the back of this fence a little bit yet too but I think we'll just have we'll just have like excess ready to go for next time I think um yeah so if we could do this back area we could do this bird we could do this little dragonfly so it'd be nice to have this entire back area done tomorrow and it'd be kind of awesome if we could start like maybe we could start like this little area. We could start doing our boxes. So that's another thing of what's furthest back. So like, for example, this box right here is further back than the tomato plants that are here. So it would make sense to do both of these first. Nothing overlaps with this one, you know, so, you know, we could do these ones or this first. Uh, but I think this will just be fun because it'll be going over the back fence. That'll be pretty. But this box for sure we want to do before we do these tomatoes, I think. So I think this is our next area that we'll focus on. So if we can finish this up, then we'll just we'll just get going on this area over here for tomorrow. So awesome. We are we are coming through with this a little bit. So all right. Um 
All right, you guys, I think that's good for the evening. I like our progress for the night. Ooh, tomorrow I will also, oops, sorry, that was probably loud. Uh, tomorrow I will also get the uh, like little baby tote that I made today <laughs> that took way longer than I thought it was gonna, I'll do a little show and tell of that and like what I'm gonna be putting in in it. It's just a pile of stuff that I've made. <laughs> Random, fun, cute little baby things that I've made in the past that I thought was fun. And the and the baby blanket that I crocheted. Uh, so I'll share all those things tomorrow. Um, all the baby stuff. And then, then we'll get some, to some more stitching. So, all right. Thank you guys again. Uh, I will see you tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, again, we're there for about an hour, but I'll see you then. Have a lovely evening. Good night.